so what are the fundamental principles the fundamental requirement would be that at small and large reactor the geometric should be similar now there are two kinds of similarities one is the geometrical similarity and the other is dynamic similarities of the flow fields so these form the principle of scale up so when we are scaling up from one size to the other then we need to ensure that the scale up at two different vessels includes geometrical similarity as well as dynamic similarity which is concerning the similarity between flow fields now to understand what is geometrical similarity geometrical similarity means the small and the large reactor should have the same shape and all the linear dimensions of the small reactor should be related to the corresponding dimensions of the large bioreactor by a constant scale factor suppose we have two reactors here the diameter is small d the height of the tank is small h here the diameter is capital d and the height of the tank is capital h and suppose the impeller diameter is di and here the impeller diameter is capital b i so what it means is the linear dimensions in the small scale reactor they will be related to the corresponding dimensions of the large bioreactor by a constant scale factor which means h upon h i should be equal to d by small d should be e so h capital h by small h is equal to capital d by small d is equal to capital d i by small d i so they are all related by a constant factor alpha so if you see the two schematics geometrical similarity would mean that if h by capital h is equal to and what does dynamic similarity means dynamic similarity is with respect to the flow fields it means that the ratio of the flow velocities of the corresponding fluid particles should be the same in both the reactors and as well as the forces acting on the corresponding fluid particles in both should also be same so when dynamic similarity of the two flow fields with geometrically similar boundaries is achieved the flow fields exhibit geometrically similar flow patterns so in this case what it means is that at a similar location in the two scales the fluid particle should experience same forces which are acting on the fluid particles and the flow velocities of the fluid particles of the corresponding fluid particles at the two scales at a specific location or similar locations should also be the same so the forces that may act on a fluid element during agitation they include viscous force drag force gravity force now according to newton's law of viscosity we know viscous force can be given in terms of the stress strain relationship now in an agitated system the average velocity gradient this which we have written as du by dy this can be assumed to be proportional to the impeller speed and the area on which the viscous force act which is given here as a is proportional to the square of the impeller diameter so then your viscous force can become a function of viscosity the impeller speed and the diameter of the impeller square 
then the drag force in the agitated system it can be characterized as given by the power number where p not will be the power dissipated by impeller without aeration so here you can say that the drag force will be proportional to the power dissipated divided by the impeller speed and the impeller diameter which is ndi would be the linear velocity so your drag force can be proportional to the power dissipated by the impeller by the linear velocity gravity's force is equal to mass times the gravitational constant so your mass is density and the volume part has been represented by the cube of the impeller diameter and you have the gravitational constant so this becomes the mass and this is the gravitational constant so your gravitational force is a function of the impeller diameter and the gravitational constant now summation of all these forces is equal to your inertial force now this is said to be proportional to your diameter of the impeller to the power of 4 and square of the impeller speed now for dynamic similarity between the model and the prototype at the two levels which we will call as m and p so dynamic similarity means what that viscous force at model type to viscous force at the prototype this ratio is varying can be given by a constant factor and the ratio of the forces acting on the fluid element at the two scales are equal so your viscous force as model type to viscous force at prototype is equal to drag force at the model type to drag force at the prototype similarly your gravitational force and inertial force so in dimensionless form your you do some rearrangement your inertial force and viscous force ratio at the prototype can be made equal to the inertial force to viscous uh, force ratio at the model type now the ratio of inertial force to viscous force is what we call as reynolds number and you can write it as rho n di square by mu similarly going by the equality given in the line 1 your ratio of the inertial force to drag force at the prototype can be made equal to the ratio of the inertial force to drag force at the model type by rearranging the equation 1 and this ratio is nothing but your inverse of power number similarly the ratio of the inertial force to gravitational force at the prototype will be equal to the ratio of the inertial force to gravitational force at the model type and this ratio is called as Froude's number and can be represented as n square di by g so the dynamic similarity is achieved only when the values of these dimensionless parameters are the same at the geometrically similar locations in model and the prototype so let's see why a scale up is a challenge after understanding that for effective scale up what is the uh, principle behind scale up so we have understood now that it is the dynamic similarity which should be met and the geometrical similarity now wh why it is a challenge to meet these similarities let's take this example to understand the power consumption by an agitator in an unbaffled vessel so your power number is on the lhs which is said to be a function of your reynolds number and determine the power consumption and impeller speed of a thousand gallon fermenter based on the optimum conditions derived from one gallon vessel so our model type volume was one gallon and the prototype 
was 1000 gallon. So we need to find out first the impeller speed and the power consumption and then there is a question which has to be answered which is, is scalar possible with respect to dynamic similarity? So let's see. Now we know that the ratio of the volume at the prototype to model type is given 1000. So from here we can find the ratio of the diameter of the impellers at the prototype and the model type which will be your 10. Let's go one by one. Let's take the first requirement, the NRE to be same. So if NRE is equal at the two levels, the correlation between N and DI, because the liquid properties will not change at the two levels. So let's call this as prototype and the other one as model type. So, the liquid properties can be cancelled because they will not change. So, then your NP DIP square will be equal to NM DIM square. So, your NP by NM ratio is equal to DIM by DIP the whole square, isn't it? So this comes out to be a relationship by taking care of NRE being same at the two levels. Now what about the similarity for the second dimensionless number which is your power number. So if we keep NP same then your P0 by N cube Di to the power of 5 at the prototype should be equal to P0 by N cube Di to the power of 5 and the model type. We know now that P0 at prototype by P0 at model type will be equal to, so here we know DIP by DIM was equal to 10. So that is what has been substituted here. Which will be 10 to the power of 5. So if you rearrange this, your P0 at prototype will become equal to P0 at model type multiplied by 10 to the power of 5 multiplied by NP by NM the whole cube and from the previous NRE substitution we could find that NP by NM was equal to DM by D P the whole square. So this was 1 to 10 square, 1 by 100. So we know that NP by NM is equal to 1 by 100. This is what is being given here. So from your first similarity, NP by NM is coming out to be 1 by 100. So if you see here, Crowd's number similarity at the model type should be equal to prototype should be equal to that at the model type. Gravitation constant is the same. So this is 10. your NP by NM is 1 by under root 10. But if you remember, by the power number similarity, we were fi finding that NP by NM is e equal to 1 by 100. So if you see 2 and 3 are two different types of correlations for 
the ratio of NP by NM, which is not possible. So hence, we can find that keeping dynamic similarity same is very challenging because generally what is observed, if you try to keep one criteria met, the other is not possible to be the same. Now, under what circumstances this can be same? Only if we manipulate the properties of the fluid, where viscosity, density, if they can be made to change. But it is the scale up of the same system which is to be done. So therefore, it is difficult to satisfy equality of all dimensionless parameters simultaneously. Hence, to reduce the number of parameters involved as to make them as few as possible, it is required to determine the most important dimensionless parameter which can be kept constant during the scale up. So, even if only one parameter is involved, it is required to define the scale up criteria. Like for example, for a fully baffled vessel, we can assume that NRE would be greater than the 10 to the power of 4, which means it will be in the turbulence region and your power number can be constant. Let us take an example of rust and turbine. So, it can be held constant at a value of 6. So, then the dynamic similarity will be satisfied if the power numbers are same at the prototype and the model type. So, with this similarity, if you can notice in the equality given here for the power numbers, then your diameter of the impeller ratios at the prototype and the model type is equal to the scale ratio. So, if the scale ratio is known and the operating conditions of the model is known, it is difficult to predict the operating conditions of the prototype still. Why? Because there are two unknowns. Still P0 is unknown and the N is also unknown. So, hence we then apply a scale up criteria which can be used to keep this dimensionless number same. So, your ratio of the diameters of the impellers are the prototype and the model type. This will be the scale ratio. So, even if the scale ratio is known and the rest of the operating conditions at the model type is known, it is still very difficult to predict the operating conditions of the prototype because there are still two variables, the power input and the impeller speed. So, therefore, we again select certain criteria which can be used for scale up. 